So I've got some concerns. I can't lie to you. I can never lie to you. Everything I tell you or, or express on this TV show is what I believe. And right now I'm concerned. I'm scared to death. I think the Republicans are on their way to certainly losing the House. And all of a sudden, the latest polls that I've been looking at out of Florida and Arizona and Indiana and even Texas have me pretty darn concerned that the Republican control of the United States Senate is in jeopardy as well. Now, that's a frightening notion. And again, we are 42 days out. And as always, 42 days is a lifetime in politics. So much can happen. Look at what has happened with Brett Kavanaugh on a day-to-day -day basis. But when you look at all of the polls, and I never just look at one poll. Nobody should ever just look at one poll. But you look at the state of Florida that we'll get into here in a minute. I mean, you've got the Democrat candidate for governor in the state of Florida now uh, up in the latest two to three polls by anywhere from four points, five points, even nine points. You've got Senator Nelson, the Democrat uh, incumbent senator in, senator in Florida, seems to have righted the ship and is now neck and neck with uh, Governor Scott, the Republican candidate for the United States Senate in Florida. And we still look at Texas, a, a state that Senator Ted Cruz, a race that should not even be in play. But the Democrat candidate, Beto O'Rourke, is certainly making that race very interesting and very tight. So th as, we, as we talk right now and as... As most of the experts, kind of publicly and privately, and, and you always get more information privately, when you talk to Republican experts privately, the pollsters, the consultants, and you talk to the Democrat pollsters and consultants privately, no surprise you get more of the truth. And the truth privately is, and you need to hear this because... We've got 42 days to go, right? That is still a lifetime. Something could change. But privately, almost to a man and almost to a woman, Republican and Democrat experts say the House is lost. The Democrats, in all likelihood, are on their way to taking control of the House. And the Senate is tight. Now, I'd like to tell you that that's where most of the Democrat experts are, but that's not the truth. That's where most of the Republican experts are as well, that the Democrats have pretty much a lock on the House of Representatives. Now, that's a problem. That's a big problem, because that means what? Remember, we're only 42 days out, but that means Nancy Pelosi... That means Nancy Pelosi is in all likelihood your speaker again. More importantly, that means if the Democrats take control of the House, that means they've got subpoena power. That means if they want to investigate every single thing Donald Trump has said or done, they can. That means the Democrats may move to try to impeach this president. They might and they will probably. They can. But it also means a halt. If the Democrats take control of either body, it means a halt to Donald Trump's agenda. And again, for you to know and for you to think about this Wednesday night, we're 42 days out. And if you've got $10,000 and you're in Vegas right now and you're putting $10,000 on well, Matt Makoviak, I think I've got him now, Republican political consultant. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start, Matt, with you right there, and I appreciate you joining me. Maybe you can't answer the question the way I'm going to ask it, but I'm going to ask it anyways. If you've got 10 grand and you're in Vegas, do you put 10 grand on the Democrats to take control of the United States House of Representatives right now? Uh, I think the answer is yes, if that's what you're uh, under that premise. I think they're slightly more likely to yes. take the House back or not. Um, what I would say, Joe, is there's 35 or so seats that are, are truly in play and that are very competitive and within the margin of error. And Democrats, as you know, need to take 23 of them. So they basically need two out of every three competitive seats. 
Uh, all Republicans have to do is win 13 of those 35 to block them from the path to the majority. So I, I'm not one of these people that thinks the majority has already been decided. I'm not fatalistic about it. I do think it's still up to the candidates, up to the campaigns, up to the president, uh, up to the, the, you know, these, the, the, the contrast that, that, that the Republicans need to drive on issues, making Democrats own their positions, sanctuary cities, $32 trillion Medicare for all, being open to abolishing ICE. Right? Impeaching Trump. These are not majority positions in the country, and Republicans need to make Democrats own those positions. Hey, Matt, I'm curious. Uh, you believe there are probably only 35 House seats in play, not more than that. Well, yeah, I mean, there are some people that think there may be as many as 60, but if you look at races where both sides are spending money, and I don't just mean the campaigns. I mean, the party committees, right, the DCCC, the NR NRCC, yeah. the race where they are both invested, buying time, reserving time, you know, expending precious resources. I think you're talking about 35 seats. Hey, Matt, what's going on in Florida? I, I've been surprised by the polling. It shows a uh, Gillum up. And, and I think the latest, the Democrat, the latest poll I show, saw showed him up nine. He seems to have some momentum right now. What's going on? Yeah, I think what's probably happened is Gillum has consolidated the Democratic base more quickly than DeSantis has consolidated the Republican base. And I like Ron DeSantis a lot. He's a very sharp guy. Uh, I think he'd be a great governor. He's a very solid conservative. But the reality is the Trump endorsement won him that primary, full stop. Yeah. Uh, and so he didn't really have the kind of statewide campaign you need. Florida is a very complicated, very large, very diverse state. I think you've probably heard it described as you know, Alabama in the north, sort of suburbia in the middle, and then sort of like, you know, Cuba in the south. And there are three distinct yeah. disparate regions of the state. Gillum, I think, is up. I think it could go either way. I think the Senate race is going to affect the governor's race because the Senate race is at the top of the top of the ballot. And if I did have $10,000 and you said, Matt, you have to bet on the Florida Senate race, I would put all $10,000 on Rick Scott. I'm highly confident he's going to give Bill Nelson his first defeat, defeat in his career, because I don't think Bill Nelson's ever had a real race. And Rick Scott's been a very popular, very successful governor. Hey, Matt, the other one I'm really curious about as well is the Senate race in Arizona. Again, seems to be very tight. I've seen Cinema, the Democrat, up, but within the margin of error. What's your take on that race? Yeah, another good question. And, and look, if you look at the math that's required for Democrats to take the Senate majority back, which, of course, is a very consequential issue related to judges starting in January, they need Arizona. They need to go 12 for 12 to take the majority back, defend the 10 seats that Trump are start from states where Trump won, where they have Democratic incumbents, and then pick up a net of two. And the most likely path for that would be Nevada and Arizona. So Arizona is very consequential. Look, Martha McSally, to me, and I know you probably know her personally, she's not a kind of yeah. hardline based conservative, but she's a very impressive candidate. I think she's consolidated yeah. her base more quickly than, than Cinema has. Cinema is running as a progressive. She's not running as a moderate Democrat. I think McSally's likely to win, but that's a one or two point race either way, and, and it's going to be right down to the wire. And, and, and quickly, Matt, right now, your read on Cruz in Texas, he's okay. Well, um, I'll say this. I think the race is, is closer than it needs to be. It's really close right now. Yeah. I'm with privy and private polling that's out there. It's somewhere between, I think, probably three and seven points in Cruz's direction. The first debate was last Friday night, and Cruz really dominated it. He made Beto own his liberal positions, like I was talking about earlier. He did that very effectively, and he took the race away from personalities, and he brought it to issues. And issues is where Cruz has an advantage. But look, there's going to be a lot of money spent in that race. O'Rourke is raising enormous money. I think I saw he raised $2 million online today. Uh, so it, you know, we're not out of the woods yet. Cruz has to run a really good reelect from here on out, and I think he's going to get a lot of help. And so far, he, are, he already has started to get a lot of help. Hey, uh, Matt, great stuff. Thanks, my friend. Thank you for joining me. Thanks, Joe. Hey, the two-state solution in the Middle East is an impossibility. We'll talk about that next.